Today we're going to be taking a look at something new from SpeedyBee and that is this, the F405 Wing APP. This is SpeedyBee's first flight controller dedicated for the fixed wing community and what we're going to do today is take a closer look at the flight controller itself, walk you through some of its features and capabilities and then at the end I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Now just to be clear of a couple of things up front, I was sent this flight controller for free by SpeedyBee, however they have not paid me to make this video and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Secondly, I will not be flying this flight controller in this video, it is going to be going into a future build. Today I'm going to give you an overview of it but if you're interested in seeing me flying it, please do make sure you are subscribed because I'll be doing that over the next couple of weeks. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what this is all about. Okay, so what we have here is SpeedyBee's first flight controller specifically designed for fixed wing applications. Now it's called the F. 405 Wing APP and what is really nice about this flight controller is it has all of the usual things you would come to expect from a SpeedyB flight controller including that wireless connectivity. When we lift the lid the first thing you'll find inside is the quick start guide. Now SpeedyB have done a real nice job here of providing a set of instructions that cover pretty much everything you need. It's not easy for me to show you this on screen here but just to show you how long it is it keeps going, showing you all of the pinouts. It then shows you traditional setups, standard setups, and everything you'll need to get yourself up and running. Now, this flight controller will look very familiar to the people in the fixed wing community who are used to the wing style controllers. It is a three board unit. So we have the bottom board, which is the power board. We have the middle board, which is the main flight controller. And then the top board, which is a bit more IO and wireless connectivity. Now, the specification of this flight controller is as follows. It is based on the stm 32 f 405 chipset which is 168 megahertz one megabyte of storage it works with both iNav and Ardrapilot specifically designed for fixed wing applications it has the ICM 42688 gyro the SPL 006 Barrow sensor, it has a micro SD card slot for login, an analog OSD chip, dedicated digital VTX chips, 11 PWM ports, six UARTs, an I2C port, a dedicated S bus input, as well as dedicated UART for receiver, has Wi Fi and Bluetooth connectivity via the Ardra Pilot or via the SpeedyB app, and it has that built in current sensor, which is rated at 90 amps up to 215 amps peak, and it even has an LED controller on board. The flight controller has headers down the bottom here for our servo outputs. We have dedicated connectors as well as solder pads on the board as well. And SpeedyB have done a real nice job of giving you as much option as possible with regards to the I.O., giving you the ability to choose whether you want to use a connector or a solder pad. Now, if we lift all the boards out and then lift underneath here, you will find the accessories. Once you get that out, you'll find all of the wiring that is for the unit included in the bottom, some I.O. headers, as well as some fixings to go between the boards. The real nice thing about this flight stack is that it has pretty much everything on both connector and pad. So you can choose what setup you want for your aircraft. You don't have to use all connections with the wiring harness. You can use the pin headers if you want. You would have to solder them to the boards or you can solder directly to the PCB as well. Another nice little feature is that they include this little I.O. board. This means that if you bury the flight controller in your frame, you can then have this I.O. board accessible, giving you access to the USB-C port, the speaker, as well as the boot button. And it's just another nice feature that SpeedyB have added to make installation into your aircraft a little bit easier. Now, moving in closer into the PCBs, the bottom board, as I've said, is the power board. This has your main battery input as well as the output to your ESC, and it has the three onboard BECs. The first BEC is a 5 volt 2.4 amp fixed BEC. The second one is a voltage selectable 5, 9 or 12 volt BEC up to 2 amp. And the third one is the BEC for our servos, which can provide 5, 6 or 7 volts up to 5 amp, providing plenty of power for your aircraft up to those 11 PWM outputs. If you look, you can see the three BECs are separated on the board. And then if I just flip it over, you can see on the back, 
it gives us the main specification as well as labeling on where we would connect our battery and where we would connect our ESC. Next we have our main flight controller board. Now we have our STM32F405 in the middle, we have an analog OSD chip, we have our SD card slot and then we've got connectors and then if I flip it over to the other side you can see you've got more connectors, some pin headers that go between the PCBs and then you've got some labeling of the specification. Now the real nice thing about this board is we have all of our headers down here for the servos. There's a header there just above them which is a UART which can be used for Crossfire, Express LRS via the RC input and there's also an S bus input over here dedicated as well. We then have some additional pads down here for our IO for a UART and then you've got your connectors around the board. There's a dedicated analog VTX connector and a dedicated digital VTX connector so it covers both sides as well as having the usual UARTs. The nice thing as I mentioned earlier though is everything is replicated on pads so what pretty much is on connector is available on pads as well so you have the choice of how you want to connect this up if you don't want to use the harnesses just solder directly to the board as i've said it has a whole host of connectivity pre set up for varying fixed wing uses so there's a uart that's dedicated for gps there's i2c for using with either a compass or an airspeed sensor and then you've got those digital vtx or analog vtx connectors allowing you to either go in with an analog camera or connect up something like dji hd0 or avatar then the last board of the three we have is the top board now this again does have some IO and it also has all of the labeling on board as well so for instance you can see headers along here with the labels for them there it has the LED controller outputs on board but it also has that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity on board as well you can see there the ESP32 we've got our little antenna and that's going to allow you to do the configuration via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth not only with the SpeedyB app but with the likes of Mission Planner and Q ground control. Assembly of this controller is fairly straightforward. You simply mount the top board onto the middle board, carefully making sure that all the connections line up. You then have these little brass rods that go down into the silicon and then you simply mount the bottom board on, again being careful that the connector does go in square and then you're not bending any pins and then you've just got small screws that you put in the top and the bottom to hold everything in place. Now obviously it is worth mentioning that this flight controller isn't completely plug and play simply because of the fact that the servo or the IO headers for the motors have not been pre-soldered. Whilst everything else pretty much has a harness connection, that doesn't and you'd either have to solder directly to the PCB or solder the pin headers on setting yourself up for the usual connector. Earlier I mentioned SpeedyB have some dedicated headers for LEDs on this flight controller and the reason for that is they are selling LED kits. Now this is a set of four LEDs that come on this PCB with four wiring harnesses that are plug and play and are ready to use with this flight controller. This again is just another nice additional accessory that SpeedyB have added to the range allowing you to pimp out your aircraft in whichever way you want to. Now just to demonstrate those LEDs, the way it works is they're connected to the main I.O. chip for wireless and you control them via the boot button on this little additional board. So what we'll do is power up the aircraft and wait for it to all kick in. You'll see the LEDs go into a holding position and the way it works is you can cycle through the options simply by pressing the boot button. So if I press it, you can say we've changed to green, we've got bright green, we've gone yellow, bright yellow, pink, bright pink, red, pink again, RGB, so we've got the different colours there. Then we've got a flashing pattern, which is flashing white and red. We're back to blue, so you can cycle through all of the LED options. Now when I got the SpeedyB, it came preloaded with iNav version 6 and you will need to make sure you've got the latest configurator for that but as I mentioned already it will be compatible with Ardrapilot as well giving you the best of both worlds options that are available today in fixed wing. 
Now, one of the nice big selling points of the Speedy B controllers has always been their wireless connectivity, and this one has that in spades because it not only has the usual Wi Fi and Bluetooth, but it also allows you to connect to it if using Ardra Pilot via Mission Planner or Q Ground Control. That means you can do your wireless configuration on the ground without having to plug in a cable. And if you're in an aircraft where you have buried the controller, and even though it does have that remote USB, it just means you don't have to mess about with cables and it's just a nice quality of life feature. For iNav users though, don't worry, you can still use the usual configuration. You have the ability to configure it via the SpeedyB app and all of the usual wireless options that you have in iNav as well. SpeedyB have clearly made a flight controller here that is designed to try and cover pretty much everything most fixed wing users want. I really am pleased to see SpeedyB enter this market space. I have used SpeedyB flight controllers a lot on this channel and overall they've been very good and it's nice to see them now move into the fixed wing area bringing those new extra features like the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality and just the overall SpeedyB way of doing things. Now I haven't obviously flown this flight controller yet and what I'm going to be doing is putting it in a new build. I'm going to be building another Ranger T1 aircraft and actually my plan is to build a Ranger T1 VTOL and I'm going to be using this flight controller to do it and if you're interested in seeing that please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel and I'll release the video when that build starts. Overall, I think this is a really nice flight controller and it's really great to see Speedy B enter this side of the marketplace. They've brought the things that Speedy B do well, which is building a flight controller with lots of additional features, but good quality as well at a decent price. As I've mentioned price, I should mention that the planned price for this flight controller, as I understand it, is going to be around $40, which I think makes it an absolute bargain and I think it's going to be a very, very popular option among the fixed wing community. Overall, so that is pretty much it on this one. I have to say, I think this is a very, very nice controller and I'm going to be putting it into that Ranger T1 build in the very near future. So again, as I said earlier, if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed. I just want to say a massive thank you to SpeedyB for sending this one over. As I said at the start, they did send me this flight controller for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. But I've never had a problem with any of the SpeedyB ones whilst I do know there has been the odd issue in the past. Lately, they really have been delivering some very, very nice hardware indeed and it's nice to see them now move into this market and see what they can do there as well. Now before I finish this video up I just want to say if you have found it interesting please do make sure you do give it a like. If you have any questions put them in the comment section and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can as well. And finally I'd like to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only with the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel and if you think you'd like to support us to make content like this in the future please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.